Hello there. Welcome back. My name is Rugby Pax. If you are watching this video, you are watching a how to play video. The first in hopefully many, but potentially the only one in this series. Um, a lot of people that I know in real life play the board game called Axis and Allies. And it's very complicated. A lot of people don't get into it simply because of the depth of the whole thing. It, it's like a comparison to Risk, but everyone hears that Risk is a two and a half or three hour board game. It's a long game. This is even more in depth in complex and potentially longer depending on your stratagem. It also seems to take more people. Risk can easily be played with two to three. This could be played with two in theory, but that would be quite difficult to keep all your stuff organized. At least it can be played by two online, which is this version. There's not much difference between the online version and the board game version, other than you have a computer, which is helpful to control all the other movements. Or, of course, you can play online against other players, but I'm not going to do that because I want to slow this down, break it apart so that you know what you need for the basics to go in and play this game, whether you want to buy it um, for tabletop or you want to just purchase this game. This game on Steam, I got it on sale, I believe, but I think I paid like 11 or 12 bucks for it. It's not an expensive game on your um, computer system. You can easily play with multiple people on the same computer. Just, you could even say that you're single player and just have them doing different things. You just have to trust that people aren't gonna screw you over when they take over your turn. Um, so yeah, so welcome to the game. This is Axis and Allies. We are going to play a new single game. So this is a basic breakdown of how it works. There are five factions, basing back to the Second World War, of course, with this being 1942. So you have Germany and Japan as the main powers of Axis, and you have the Allies being Russia, Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States. All of the other countries are involved, as you'll see in a moment once we get into the map. But you can't control them as a, as a faction. Like, if you're the UK, you start with India, and you start with Canada, and you kind of work from there. Like, you can move troops around in the areas you control, but you can't always build unless you have a major center like the UK. So, just to slow things down, I'm going to play as the Soviet Union and the UK. As I said, when you play, you could play with two players, and I could be all three of these, but I find that's a lot to manage. The only downside to playing on the computer is you can't communicate with your allies as to what you want them to do. Like, oh, I'm going to go sweep around here. You could help me by sending tanks this way or whatever. If you play on the tabletop method, you should have, I would estimate, probably three people, maybe four, because usually an easy breakdown to do is again what I'm doing so you have somebody play as Russia and the UK you have someone play as the US because they're pretty expansive and it takes quite a ways for them to get involved so you need lots of Navy which is harder I find to manage but maybe that's just me and then yeah you probably want someone playing as Japan as themselves again they're a huge part of this and Germany themselves you could play both of these together but it does take a little while to get used to trying to manage they're very different play styles. Let's just say that. So there are two other victory conditions that you can play, whether in real life or, sorry, on tabletop, I guess you should say, and on the computer. So standard victory is you must control nine victory cities. It's a little shorter. The average game would be three hours or so, um, or you can play, so yeah, Axis control nine, sorry, Allies control ten. Because there's three of the allies they need to control a little bit more to say that they've won total victory does not matter which side you play each side has to have 13 victory cities i'm going to play standard victory for now because i'm not going to go all the way through this i don't expect you to sit with me for three and a half hours and watch me play out the rest of this game but we will get to see what we do so if i hit start 
it shows you at the beginning, and this is why I wanted to play as Russia. I almost never play as Russia. I usually play as the UK. You can already see, like, this might be overwhelming to you already. Because if you're used to risk and you're like, oh, I just have infantry and cavalry and maybe some artillery. This is insane compared to this. This is risk on steroids. It's great for people that like chess and strategy and wartime kind of stuff like risk but want to take a step up. Don't panic. It's okay. We'll walk you through it. So every turn, sorry, every round, every team gets a turn. Unless their main city has been captured by the enemy. They still technically get a turn, but they can't build anything and they can't do anything. So they can only move existing troops. We may get a chance to show that, but I thought I'd mention it now in case I forgot. So if your key victory city, sorry, if your main city, so Russia, UK, the US, if those are captured, if your capitals are captured, you can't actually build anything on your turn, even if you have a factory available, because you need your main city in order to do that. You can still control troops that are out and about, but... I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Each turn has five components. Everything seems to run in fives. There are five factions. The turn, sorry, I should say, the, the round ends on America's turn. So even if the UK captures that 10th victory city, we would have to hold it as the allies until the end of USA's turn, until the end of the full round. Again, there are five nodes here. What is that? Why do we have five nodes here? Five parts to your turn. So at the beginning of each turn, you are going to purchase units that you want to use, but you need to remember, and this is what tripped me up for the longest time, you don't get those until the end of your turn. They are in production during your turn. At the very last stage of your turn, you can place them out from any of the factories that you currently control. So if you're thinking like, oh, I could wipe these guys if I buy a few tanks, they're not going to be there for that attack on this turn. They may not be there for the attack on next turn if that city gets pushed against anyway, but typically what happens is you buy your stuff looking ahead to next turn to where you want to use them or where you want to defend. So, for example, they have some troops up here. I don't really feel like losing Corellia right away. I've got some decent pieces. I may not put anything up there. The other thing to look at while we're looking at purchasing, and again, take a deep breath because there's a lot of stuff involved, each thing has a cost. Everybody uses the same currency. International purchase currency, I think. Something like that. I should have looked it up before I started, but I didn't. Don't worry about industry right there. We'll get to that in a subsequent turn. Each thing has a different value for attack and defense. So if you take infantry into another country to invade, they need to roll a 1 in order for them to hit the enemy. However, they're cheap and they are good defense because if somebody invades into our country, they either need to roll a two or a one. So they have double the opportunity to hit on defense as they do on attack. Tanks, obviously, for the price, can move quite far. They can move through two countries in one turn. Other units are quite slow. So again, remember that. Anti-aircraft, we'll get to that when we um, do some raiding ourselves. We also have sea units. You can only build into a connected water base from a factory you have. This cannot build sea units. There is nowhere for it to go. But again, that's why I said... I know, I'm moving the map a lot. It's a little more difficult to play as the US and Japan because a lot of your units are built here. And then they have to be transported across to where you need to go. So if you want to start with the basics, you could start as Germany or you could start as the UK. They do involve some ferrying as well, but not as much. I tend to see people play the UK as an aerial base. 
and they try to knock out Germany so that the U.S. can come across and help. You don't have to play it that way. It always depends on what the enemy does. You can't just decide a plan and stick with it because it may not work. Again, different movement amounts, two, 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 two. Everything can move two C units. Certain things have different attacks. Certain things have different abilities. Like an aircraft carrier can support two fighters controlled by you. So if you have two fighters that you want to bring along with you, you can do that. You can put your aircraft carrier there, park two fighters on it. I don't think I, I have one fighter. Um, and you can move it across to maybe USA. Again, we have two air units. They're expensive. Bombers can move quite a bit, and they're the best for attack. But they are very weak on defense. If you leave them somewhere, it's a good chance they're not going to provide you a lot of help. I find that in general, your fighter is your better option. The only other thing with the bomber is that you can do strategic bombing raids. What is a bombing raid? That gets into your industry tab. So if I have a bomber, that's not a bomber. I don't think I have any at the moment to show you. But they do. If Germany decides to send their bomber, and remember their bomber can go six units, one, two, three, four, they could bomb my factory and damage it, which would mean I would have to repair it before I could build any more units. We'll get to that, though. So for the first turn, I think I am going to try and push Germany back as Russia. They're pretty weak here. One tank, one infantry, that's pretty weak. But don't, don't forget double defense so you don't ever want to send a one infantry in versus one infantry you will most likely lose so i think we need to take this area which is fairly heavily fortified but we don't want to lose any of our factories on the first turn hmm what do we want to buy i'm going to buy a couple of tanks which leaves me with 12 and i think i'm going to buy three artillery so remember, you don't get these until the end of your turn. They've been purchased. But I can't use them yet. Then we move to phase two of your turn. The combat move. You can only move things that are going to engage in combat. I may want to bring these guys over to support these guys. I can't make that move because there's no combat move in there. They're not attacking anything. So they can't do anything. So you can only do attack first. Don't worry, you can move them after. But for now, all we can do is move things that are going to directly be involved in combat. Hmm. I think I'm going to put them there. So i got a fighter coming in to attack. Rip a tank through. Hmm. They've got a lot of that, though. That's the scary part. I've got an artillery. And if you click on each one in this particular model, it will tell you what your chances are and how they're going to defend. So don't forget, they have three infantry that defend on two. So what that means is they hit you if they roll a one or a two. So it's that number or lower counts as a hit. Not that number exactly or that number and above which confused me again the first time i played i thought it was three or more or two or more and i was like yeah that's great um no it's or less so your artillery only gets a hit if it's a two or a one on your attack roll hmm usually when i play russia i play too soft let's wipe him out of the top shall we Oh, I can't leave that completely undefended. That was a bad call. Sub can't go anywhere yet. Okay, that's fine. So this is a poor choice, it says, right? Implausible choice. I don't know about that. They do have three infantry, though. This is the problem. Is It's a lot of planning, too. And as I said, the only reason I'm playing is Russia in this one is because... I wanted to slow down the first turn so you could see each part of each turn. But I'd never play as Russia. So this is a little bit of a tricky, uh, tricky, tricky, tricky. So this one only had one tank, right? The fighters will come back. That's the other thing to remember is fighters cannot land in 
taken territory. They have to come back to home territory. Yeah, that is pretty implausible, but I could come in there with that tank and make it probably a pretty fair fight. Favorable. That's the only move I think I'm going to make for attack. I might bring one infantry in. Infantry is not very useful on attack. Like I said, I almost never use infantry on attack, but that'll help a little. And that might push us in there. So now we've gone to the combat move. When you go to the combat move, you then do your rolls. In real life, you will have people rolling dice for and against, so you'll have your own dice, they'll have their own dice, much like Risk, and if your dice is lower, as you'll see when we come in, you win. But they do get a chance to return. So I have two units that attack on two or less, two units that attack on three or less, they only have two units total, so we will start combat. Missed both hits, hit both hits, so they are going to die. We have won this fight, however, they still get a chance to return their fight. So, we've hit both of them. We know they are going to be eliminated, which is good, because we have three units that we are going to go through. One hit, one miss. So now we can pick which one we want to get eliminated, or we can auto-assign hits. In real life, on tabletop, you have to pick which unit they're going to destroy. Usually you would pick your cheapest unit. Not always. The only time you wouldn't pick your cheapest unit is if there's somewhere you really want to invade because planes cannot invade, as I said. They can't land where they are. So they can eliminate all the enemy, but it would stay their territory unless you move a f land force, a ground force, in. So I'll continue. We lost our infantry. They lost an infantry and a tank. It'll come up with a nice victory flag. Russia has won. We lost three units of currency. They lost nine, so we won in both ways just kind of summarizes it for you this doesn't happen obviously in tabletop and you do have to pay good attention to what's happening again that can't land there and there is fuel remember they can move four units but that doesn't mean they can move four away and four back they only have four countries worth of fuel so these have to land somewhere safe i might actually do a tricky here ah that leaves me pretty empty though I'm going to put him there. I was going to fly over to the UK. Now we're in our non-combat move. Obviously, I have to move that back. If you don't, you don't have to, but you crash. You lose the fighter. So like I say, in, in tabletop, it won't let you do it on the online version on this game. But if you have a fighter here, you can technically go four straight, attack with it, and then just kamikaze in your toast. That's your unit lost. It's not really worth it ever unless there's something big coming up that you want to kind of punch a hole through for your partner or whatever. Yeah, I don't find it very useful. So, now I'm going to move some of these down to create a wall here because there's no point holding these territories. These guys are going to come down here. So this, like I say, you can move your units around. I want to get my subs. Ooh put my sub there so submarines have a special attack and defense too we will get to that i don't think i need to move anything else so that's the end of this turn it does summarize what's happening there's a lot going on it doesn't matter you saw what i was doing now we go to our requisition phase mobilization phase whatever you want to call it these are what i bought at the beginning of the turn they're now done since we've spent all this time fighting off the enemy we're done what we were doing. So I'm going to put my units out where I want them. And hopefully, because Germany goes next, this will allow my country, z countries, to defend against the attacks that are going to come before I get to go again. So it's four full rolls before Russia gets to do anything again. So that's a lot of planning you've got to do in advance. Now, when I hit next, it's going to go really quick. Germany's just going to be lines all over the place. Try to keep up if you can. If you can't, don't worry. We're going to break it again or break it down again on my turn with the UK. So best of luck. 
So that was just a quick infographic saying how many victory cities we have. So they're trying to take out my UK little base here in Africa. They're also going to try to attack some of the British Navy up there. So Britain hasn't had a turn yet. This is how they were set up to go. They are going to obviously come after my... I forgot there was a little attachment there. They should get that, no problem. It's one infantry. If they lose that, I'll be surprised. So they did manage to take Corellia. The problem with being Russia at this point is it's a hard fight because you're so weak. At this point in the war, you fought back. It's tough. Your job as Russia and Germany, really, is essentially to wait for your allies to come and save you. You need to defend your main area so that you're not completely wiped out, and then you can get some assistance coming. If they spread themselves too thin, though, I can come around and attack, which is great. So I have a transport. Oh, well, let's get to that after. So again, I have two fighters and a bomber. I kind of want more than that because I want to start peppering the coast. And I want to get rid of these guys. So I have a feeling I'm going to use these guys. So if I'm going to use them and maybe lose them. Because there's a sub, two subs, and a cruiser. So how do they attack? I can look on mine. Subs have a two for attack. I'll get to that in a sec. Transports cannot attack. I don't think that transport has anything in it. Oh, it does. It has some men in it. So if we sink that, they lose an infantry that they're going to try and push up through here which is a bonus. But transports can't attack. They can move, but they can't attack. They can't do anything. So if they're alone somewhere, they get wiped out by any attack. Aerial or sea. So they've got one cruiser, which has a high attack. And they've got two subs. So they've got pretty good odds. I don't know if I want to send my whole Air Force in to get absolutely murdered. But I do know I'm going to use them, so I have to replace them. I'm probably going to lose one of them. Maybe two of them. Hopefully not. So I'll get two fighters. I wish I could get a bomber. And then maybe I'll go... No, I've got a thing there. Yeah, I will go see. Can't afford a cruiser. No! Hmm. So, I have a transport, but I have a feeling it's not going to last long. They have three fighters here. By the time I get around to my next turn, I'll be wiped out. But I'm hoping not entirely. Hmm. Okay. That's what I'm buying. I'm buying one fighter, one cruiser, a tank, and an infantry. Not much. Again... Oh, so, again, it's yelling at me. Moves to correct. There is nothing happening here. I clicked it by accident, but it's a good example. You can't make that move in this round. It is not your phase to make non-combat moves. So it's yelling at me because it doesn't want that. I wish I could use my Russian sub in this turn. So let's go see if I was to do that and take my destroyer and my bomber. Hmm... It's favorable. It's not great. I wish I had a sub or something to attack with. Oh well. The other thing to watch now is they did pretty well there. I'm going to get overrun because I have Japan on my back. And now Germany on my front. I don't really want to attack anybody yet. And the reason this fighter is in no man's land is it's technically attached to this aircraft carrier. So I can use that to attack them, but that's not ideal. They've got fighters everywhere. What I usually do, and don't forget, I always forget this. If you're the UK, you have useful stuff down here. Load that transport up and come help yourself. This guy's in trouble. Maybe we'll go save him, but that leaves this empty. Hmm. Lots to think about in each turn. There really is. So I'm going to make that attack. I can't fill him up yet. I don't think I'm going to do anything here. Could send the cruiser in. That's a battleship, though. The other thing to consider with battleships, 
and I think it's just battleships. They can take two hits. They're big. So if you send a cruiser in against a battleship and go, oh, I hope I can just take it down, you have to hit it twice before it hits you once. They're the biggest thing. That's why they're worth 20 IPC. They are hard to eliminate. Huh. I don't think there's much else I want to do yet. So I'm literally doing nothing. I'm playing a little cautious, but this shows you again, kind of turn by turn, what's happening. So we have one area we're attacking, hoping to eliminate two subs, a cruiser, and a transport. So this is our first Navy battle. Nothing is different. <laughs> they make it sound so different. Like, oh, naval battle. So our submarine... Sorry, that's our destroyer. Our destroyer cancels out their surprise attack. I say this just as a warning. Submarines, if they are attacking and there's no destroyer present, they get a surprise roll. So they get to go before anything else, whether they're on attack or defense. But again, they only hit on, I think, one on defense, two on attack. Yeah. So we made a hit. We made another hit. We got them all. So... As long as they don't hit one, two... They can only hit us three anyway. So we've won this fight. So everything is toast. So they hit one of ours back. Two of ours back. That's a lot of damage. So we've lost our destroyer, which means our transport is left empty. Which I don't like. And I guess we'll lose a fighter. But the good thing is we've wiped them out. So their transport with infantry is also automatically eliminated because it can't defend so there is no point wasting time rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling until you hit a three or four you have attacking pieces left they don't it's eliminated period unless you decide not to for whatever reason in tabletop so again we saved more money than they did but that was an expensive loss i was hoping only to lose one but that is what it is so this transport now is vulnerable it has nothing to protect it First things first, I'm going to deal with the screaming arrows at me, which is obviously just going to make me land back at home, where we left from. Now for the next part. You can fill transports up with either an infantry and a tank or two infantry. So if you are next to something, you can put your tank on your transport, load her up. So now we're loaded. I don't want to be anywhere near these fighters. Because again... I'm undefended. So as soon as they come after me, I'm done. So I'm going to move over here. They'd have to throw a bomber at me all the way over here and kind of waste it. Which, like I say, you can't do that in this one for some reason. I'm going to fill up this transport with two infantry. So that's a fully loaded transport. We need to keep him safe. We could push up and try to counter these guys, but I find that's a waste of time. So we're going to try and come around and help ourselves. But I want to stay away from these guys for now. I'm going to go this way. So if I was just to make that move and leave these here, I'd be in trouble. Okay, let's pause for a sec. Uh, view all of these. Oh, I have to cancel it all. Oh, well, whatever. I can move a sub into enemy areas as long as they don't have a destroyer so again that follows that logic that subs are submerged and unseen i mean they know they're there but they can't attack you and you can live there which is great so i'm gonna move him back i don't mind losing the strait of gibraltar yet actually see they've got help coming that i'm just hoping that hamstrings them a little bit if they lose one tank and an infantry that helps me because i don't want to get pinched in the middle here <sighs> unless you set out to defend india really tough which kind of leaves you weak um you're almost always going to lose india there's no way you've got too much coming at you you're lucky if you can hold them off all right so that's all i can do for this turn now we're going to watch a few turns in a row because we don't control japan or usa Actually, no, wait, we gotta deposit our stuff first. So I'm gonna drop a cruiser up here. 
with the sub. Because then if they, they come, at least I get some help. It's not that much help. I'm going to drop a tank down here. And another infantry, maybe. A lot of your land units are useful here at the beginning because they kind of help hold off the inevitable. You don't need land units up here until you can get a transport here. They're useless. You do want to build them up eventually, but I don't think I'm going to get there anytime soon. So that's everything done. I'm happy with that. So here goes Japan. They're going to try and kick America out of the rest of their land. They are coming for me. I say, usually the way you would play this is with a couple of people. So you would see this coming and you'd be able to interact by rolling your own dice in defense. This does it all automatically. So like the computer is showing you defense rolls, you would also have defense rolls. So it depends on the luck of the dice a lot of times. Sometimes you can have an infantry go in against two tanks and win. It just boggles the mind. It happens sometimes. I think we're going to lose everything here. I lost my fighter. Ooh, but they're down to just a fighter. We managed to hold them off. We took out a battleship. Now, that's an undefended transport, so I need to get something on that right away, unless Germany's got... Germany's got nothing. They can't come through, though, I think. That battleship. Oh, no, I've closed the strait. So, there are two straits. One here, one right under that, which is not letting me show you at the moment. If, uh, if one side doesn't control both sides, no boats can go through, which is helpful. So that's a part of the reason I put that there. So it's back to us as Russia. We have a sub up here. They have a sub. It's no point going sub to sub combat because the chance... Well, here, I can show you. Oh, I can't yet. Um, it's, it's not very high odds that you win. I do kind of want to push... Hmm. I want to push these guys back and take Corellia. That's just one tank. That shouldn't be that hard to destroy. But again, it's hard because you're pushed. You, Russia is in a bad spot. Let's go a tank. A couple of tanks. And a lot of infantry. So again, just a reminder, we're going to go through a couple of turns. I'm probably not going to go past round three. I just want you guys to see how this kind of all lays out. Um, those units, we're planning in advance. We can't use them on this turn yet. So I'm going to send one tank. Because I don't want to leave this too weak. And... Are those bad guys? No, those are me. Maybe we won't worry about those yet. Maybe we'll worry about the people in front of us. So let's send... One artillery and one tank. The only thing you haven't seen yet is a bombing raid, so maybe I'll do that next turn, even though I'll probably lose my ship. I'll lose my bomber for sure, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm not planning on finishing this game, so I don't worry about that. Um, I wish I had more bombers. Maybe I'll buy some more bombers. Yeah, I will. Okay. That should be enough to take that tank out, you would think favorable. It's not great. I'd like to send more. Hmm. Let's send one of these, because then I can move that guy in before anybody else does. Works for me. I kind of want to send this. So let's take a look again. Yeah, I was talking about this. So if I do sub to sub combat, it's unlikely. I need to roll a two, they need to roll a one. Is it really worth risking it? No, but let's see what it's like, I guess. If we can knock out their sub, it does help. So we're doing our naval second, I think. So let's do our Western Russia invasion. So this is just general combat. It is land units on land units. You haven't seen an amphibious assault yet. I'm going to try and get to that before the end of turn three, but we will see. So one hit, they're done. But they do get a chance to return. Serve... And they didn't hit, so we get to keep everything. So that was just a straight-up flawless victory, Mortal Kombat style. We now own Western Russia. Now we're going sub-to-sub -sub combat. We have twice the chances of them to...
to actually win this battle, but that doesn't always mean a lot. So there's your surprise strike because there's no um, destroyer to drop charges on us. It wouldn't really matter because we're both subs, so we missed. So again, they get a surprise strike. It's not really surprise strikes. It's two subs attacking each other, but... So we could choose at this point. Nothing happened. We could choose to retreat. So we would go back to the territory we came from, or a different one subsequent, or uh, adjacent, sorry. Or we can continue to fight. If we've decided, oh, we got lucky, that's enough. I think we're done. I'm going to go for it. Missed again. And we're toast. So I just sent a sub in to its death. We did nothing. Bad luck. In theory, we should have won. But there goes our sub. Which leaves my cruiser isolated in, in another country. So that's another thing. is You can't move another country's units on your turn. So even if you have two things in the same country, you can't use Russian units as a UK person. You can't use, a, you know, whatever. Uh, vice versa. So if I was to move these two infantry up, or a tank up, into here, I couldn't use it on Russia's turn. It could be there to defend, but it doesn't help me with anything else. So this is my non-combat move. I want to move these guys, that guy back into there. I don't think they're going to come this way, but I'm going to move two there and one there. Oops, I meant to move another one there. Just so they don't press down and surround me. At least that slows them down. And I don't think Russia has anything else to move that I care about. So let's see what Germany does. Oh yeah, let's drop some tanks in. Some artillery. One infantry there. So again, we're playing defense. We're not really on the attack as Russia. So hopefully by now you're starting to get a feel for the game. I do realize there are turns in between where we're just watching the computer go and it looks so much faster than it is. This is a really slow game. It takes quite some time to do. But that's okay. It's a lot of fun. If you can get three or four of your friends together, or five if you have enough <laughs> COVID time, um, if you have five people that are willing to get together and spend three or four hours doing this, it is a lot of fun. Order a pizza, have some beer, whatever. You know, do what you're going to do and uh, have a lot of fun with it. It is quite a blast. All right, so we got to order our units here. I'm going to order, even though this is going to totally lose me everything, I'm going to order one more bomber, I guess, because I got I need to get something down here for him. And I'm going to order another anti-aircraft gun. What does an anti-aircraft gun, gun do, rugby packs? I'll show you in a minute. So... Combat move. I don't think there's much I want to do. Hmm. There's only an anti-aircraft gun there. That's pretty weak. But there's nothing else I can hit. There's nothing in range for these fighters because that counts as a country or a space. So you can't go just like, one, two, I'm there, because you would have had to cross the ocean or the water or whatever you want to call it. I'm hoping that doesn't leave me. Oh, I could do... All right, so here's an example. We're going to lose this. 100%. However, this is what's called an amphibious assault. I wish I could have got across to here before they put any units in, but that's fine. So what happens is, because there's a tank loaded up, they have three shots of this. I maybe won't actually do this, um, but it's just to show you that you can do it. So I have a transport that has stuff in it. I can then go to a unit adjacent to a country I can offload that unit, whether it be a tank, artillery, infantry, doesn't matter. And they will then attack on that turn. So that's very helpful. I could even do it on this turn up here, which would not be a bad idea. Except it leaves me weak here. Whatever, let's do it. Let's do it so I can show you what it is. So I can load up a transport and move it. However, I can't move one space, load up, and then go. If that makes sense. So if I was in zone 31, I couldn't move to zone 35, load, and then move to zone 34 to attack. Not that there's anything to attack there, really. Um, because that would count as stopping your turn. 
I'm not going to do this one because that's definitely going to lose me a tank. I'm not going to move there either. Um, and then I will show you what a bombing raid does. So you can attack as normal or you can choose to bomb with a bomber. I'd love to like to have done it with two, but I have a feeling I'm going to be replacing it anyway. So the bombing run always goes first. Usually I wouldn't do this with a single bomber because there's almost no chance you'll succeed. This is what the anti-aircraft guns are for. So your industrial complex has anti-aircraft guns. For every anti-aircraft gun that they have purchased, like the one that I just bought, they get a roll before you even get to attack. If they roll a one, they hit one of your units. They missed. Now whatever I roll does damage up to 20. If it's 20, it completely eliminates their thing. I did 5 damage to their stuff. So before they can build any units, they need to put 5 IPC into repairing their industrial complex and build more units. It's very helpful for slowing or hampering if you know that people are starting to get ahead of you. But it is risky, because if they have 2 or 3 anti-aircraft guns, your odds of surviving that are pretty low, actually. Even though it's just a 1 out of 6 chance... I've had it where I've sent four bombers in against two anti-aircraft guns and lost two of them just by chance. So again, not great as attackers infantry, but hopefully with the extra help. So we missed both. So we're hoping he doesn't hit, which he did. So I've lost that. Oops. Now it's just a one-on-one -on -one fight. Or I could retreat. Oh no, I can't because I'm on the ground. So you can't retreat on an amphibious assault. Hopefully he doesn't hit me good if he'd have hit me we'd have won the invasion but we would not have actually taken the country because we didn't land any troops that stayed so it would have remained germany's country so we've now wiped them out we own both sides we can use this on our next turn allies can use this straight they can't Oh yes, I need to move my bomber back. That's good. So I can still move some units around. I'm going to move him up here to help. I'm going to move this train. Oh, I can't move that transport. Huh. Hopefully they don't have anything that can come get me. They do right there. I'm in trouble. Anyway, so that's how a bombing raid works. I'm going to move him up just one because they're destroyers there. I have a feeling it's not going to stay there, but hopefully they don't leave me isolated. They might. I say it's hard to communicate when you don't actually have other players. Usually, in a real war, too, these people would be talking to each other. You wouldn't just send your transport in to where there would be nothing at the time of your attack. Excuse me. You don't want to just be wiped out. And don't forget about these guys. They are coming to help. I might deploy these together and then wipe them out and come around and attack from the south, actually. But that's for later. I now have to figure out where I want to put my units. So my anti-aircraft is obviously going to go there. So I have an extra anti-aircraft so that they don't just do bombing runs. They don't have any bombers at the moment, but you never know. I missed that. Oh, they're hidden. Okay. I can throw a bomber in there. But I'm not going to. I'm going to continue hitting them. Good enough for me. So let's see what happens. So Japan is not our friend. They're going to try and wipe me out here. I did not fortify this very well. I have a feeling we've kind of given this up. This needs to get out of there. This is this is in trouble. The transport is in trouble because, like I say, if anything comes near it, it's toast. It can't defend itself. I was hoping I could move that cruiser over the next time, but their battleship came along and wiped me out. We haven't had a battleship fight yet. So I can't show you how it can take a second hit. But, uh, ooh. USA is deciding to take my route through. I think they're bombing the city. And then attempting to take this part of the coast. Excellent. So now I don't need to do that. Now I'm going to push right through, hopefully, and get into France. But I can't because that's not attached. So it's going to be one two three i won't be able to do it this turn so you got to watch your movement rates because the the sectors are cut into really weird spots sometimes i also just realized we lost uh Caucasus. 
So this will probably be the last turn I take you to through. Hopefully you're starting to figure it out. Um, as I've said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will probably try to reply. I'm If people are interested in learning more about complicated board games like these, I love board games. Um, if there's anything you want me to go over or, or show you, leave me a comment after the video. Mm, let's do some attacking. Bugger this. Um, I want to kind of sweep down, but I don't. That's a lot to take. <sighs> you know what we will do is just to show you what I mean with the battleships is I'm going to send my only fight. Like, I'm setting up to lose here because I'm just trying to show you examples of stuff. So let's just do a really defensive unit. The other thing to watch... Sorry, I didn't mention this. You can build an industrial complex on a turn anywhere you own, but you got to watch the numbers because that's the amount of value of units you can... Sorry, that's the amount of units you can place in a single turn. So, it just so happens that I can lay 8 infantry and that would be all I'd be able to lay. I'm sure you noticed it before when the numbers were coming up, like 0 of 3 or 0 of 2. Owning Corellia, I can only put two units out. It could be two bombers. They could be really expensive units, or it could be two infantry. But you can't create more than two in a turn. So if all you own is Russia, and you can afford to build, which I can't in this turn, which sucks, but if I could afford to build nine infantry, I wouldn't be able to do it because I have nowhere else to offload them, so it wouldn't let me do that. That's one more thing I forgot to mention that I probably should have a lot earlier. So we'll do that in two tanks. That's fine. That's enough for me. I will show you what it's like. Hopefully I can land a hit. I'm just going to go after them just to piss them off a bit. It's not going to do me any good. They're starting to build up here. I might... Oh, I can't do anything there. I'm holding them down, though. I'm making them go down, which is good with that five units. This is what I mean about Russia. It's hard, man. It's hard. They got five tanks coming. We're in trouble. They are going to surround us. We are in trouble. That's all I'm going to do is just show you. I'm going to lose this fighter, guaranteed. There's no way I'm not going to lose this fighter. <laughs> Battleships have a high attack. I think it's four. And, uh, yeah. So this is what I mean by they can take two hits. So even if I roll a three on the first one, which I did, bang, I hit him. He hasn't been sunk because he's a battleship. And there goes my fighter. So I would have won that if it was regular. Fighters are also the same, apparently. So I have lost that fight, and he reheals after that fight. It's only during that fight, I believe. I might be wrong on that. But I'm pretty sure every fresh fight. Yeah. He's rehealed. Some people play it in the other version. I'm going to move them there. Stop them. Maybe go after them. That uh, if it's been hit once, it's it's hit forever until you bring it back to a port and heal it. But I, I don't know many people that play that way. And uh, people that do play that way. Everyone has their own house rules. You do have to ask. But if you're setting it up, then that's how you play. So again, I have six units. If I was trying to build... Even in Italy or something, like Italy only has a deposit of three. And that's what they're worth also. So this is how much cash you're earning for owning that country. So I can lay eight units out. And I'm going to have to be happy with that and see if Germany can take me. Again, this hasn't changed very much, even though people have gotten countries because they have to be key cities. Now, they just took another one. I don't know where. I missed that. Maybe it was that one. Alright. So I got two bombers. So I'm going to go bomb the crap out of them. I could wipe them out. I want to wipe out their sub too. Like I said, I'm not really playing to win here. They have one tank now. Like, that's the problem, is I would have loved to have come up. I can't do anything here now because of that. I don't... Oh, I could attack them. That's a bad idea. 
Oh, it's not what I said. Oh, I, so I can blitz in. Sorry, I meant to mention that. So if you have a country that is empty, you can blitz right through and take them. So those would all become mine. Or, if you're lucky enough to have a tank, you can blitz in and blitz out. And that country becomes yours. It's excellent, right? I was thinking of sending in some units here. Maybe I will. Let's just put some pressure on them. It's probably not going to work. It's definitely not going to work. But we've already... Like, they're going to come along here, so I don't need to worry about taking those. And then I'll show you the bomber thing again. You can use them to attack instead, but I'm going to choose not to do that. He's submerged, so I can't get him. There we go. Perfect. So I can show you an amphibious assault, too. The only other thing I guess I haven't shown you is you can do what's called bombardment, which is no different than bombers. If you have a battleship or a cruiser or whatever, and you are also offloading amphibious troops, so if you're sending in your tank or whatever, you can then use one of these to fire in an initial bombardment. No different than your, um, like your air raids and stuff like that. I think that's all I want to do right now. All right, so this will be our last round. I'll just, uh, hopefully by now you've got the general gist of it. Bombing raid goes first. We've got two planes this time, so even if they hit us once, we're going to be able to get through and lay some damage. Oh, apparently they built another one. So I did nine damage that time, so that's an expensive one. We've cut their factory almost down to half, so that's good. So again, that's 9 IPC at the beginning of their turn out of their 30 whatever they're going to own that they're going to have to put into building their own rebuilding their own factory. And they didn't take down any of my bombers. So here's your amphibious assault. You have planes and a tank coming in. Bang, bang. Two hits. They're toast. This is where I took one hit but I only have one tank. If I want to land the invasion... I have to lose a bomber, which is more expensive, and it will auto-assign it to the u the cheapest unit, but if you want to own that part of the land, if you want to put the pressure on and count the invasion, I'm going to choose to lose a fighter instead and land my tank. Otherwise, we don't get the country. So that is now ours. It wouldn't have been otherwise. Not that it's going to stay that way because I only have one tank there, but just to show you. And we're almost done, I swear. So here's where I say infantry are essentially useless, but apparently not on this roll. So we've won this battle. They didn't hit. They didn't hit. Flawless victory. Boom. And the UK is coming through again. So here's where you'd move up your stuff. I'm going to move these guys up here. I may just play through one more turn. I know I said I wouldn't, but I will. Just to show you a bombardment. As long as their fighters don't take me out. So I can't land anything there. Oh no, no, I forgot to move. This is the other thing. Remember to move your stuff. That transport's toast. Fuck. Oh well. And you can't go back. I mean, I could, in theory. Not save or whatever, but too late now I also meant to move him up but I forgot I got so excited about the next turn okay so we'll watch what's happening yeah oh look at that boom my transport's dead shock and awe so lots going on so they're building a huge amount of troops up here okay I'm in trouble is Russia you can also opt to not have a... How the hell did they get a fighter way over there? Or a bomber? Okay. Um, you can also opt to not attack, which I'm going to do this turn, because I have 14 IPC, because I have two countries. I'm in trouble. Um, those are just more expensive versions of the same thing. 
14. If I do 6, that still leaves me 8. I'm going all infantry. And hoping I can survive an attack. So I'm obviously not going to send anything anywhere. There's no real point. They're all massing up here. I could try to punch through. There's no point. We're losing this. I want to defend that. I'm going to skip my fight turn. And I'm going to not move anything because I can't. And I'm going to plunk my infantry in there and hope to heck that they've got enough guts to fight it off. So Germany is coming after my single destroyer, which is fine by me, because I want to show you the bombardment that is about to happen, but I'm worried they'll send that after me. They did not. So they managed to succeed in kicking out my tank, but they only had one tank left, which is good. They've left Germany completely isolated. Um, if I had a transport they could get there, which is why they know they're safe, I could get into Germany this turn, but I can't because that's one, two, three away, and they also have defense there to stop me from moving through even if I did. You can only move through empty areas. I lost a fighter last time. Wouldn't mind getting another destroyer in there, and then I'll do a tank and one of those. So all I want to show you in this one, I'm not going to do much in the way of fighting because I'm never... Well, maybe I will. I'm going to try. This is stupid because I should be pressuring them this way, but it doesn't matter. They're coming eventually to help. So if I offload here, I can then choose to bombard. I don't think I can bombard with that. No, so there's no point doing that. I can send that in there and cause some damage. So I'll show you what a bombardment does. So that's a solo fight again. We'll see, because that'll stop me from losing that. Send the bombers in. Bomb, bomb. And... Let's send the fighters after these guys. It's a pretty good turn, actually. So this is a good way to end it. Four rounds, you'll see. You're getting the general idea. I'm not doing well. I'm losing. Russia will not get it. Russia did not or will not get a turn on the next one. We've lost our capital. I may just show you the beginning of that, and then that'll be it. Promise. I keep saying, this will be it. No, this will be it. So here is your bombing raid. We've got three bombers this time. They get a roll at each one. They missed all my planes. We did a lot of damage. Almost completely eliminated their stuff. So let's see how we do here. So we get a bombing or a bombardment from our ship. You can't do it with destroyers or subs, I believe. And it still counts as three. So our ship, in theory, could take this out on its own. Missed, unfortunately. Now we have two. Oh, no, this isn't going well. And that's it. So we don't get to bombard again. And we lost all our stuff. I thought we'd have it with the bombardment, but we didn't. So we lost two infantry. We don't lose the transport troop. Um, the transport ship. It stays here, but we should have been able to invade there. That was bad. That's just bad luck. Like, a three and a pair of ones is all you needed. I know the ones is not a great pair, or a great chance, but... I'm just not rolling anything now. We're going to lose everything here. Yep. There goes one of them. So again, they're not there for the next attack. Oh, we managed to take out their artillery. That's something. It's still going to hit, though, isn't it? Do we stick around? Yes! We got it. Luckily. So we're going to get India back. Not that we have much there to defend it. It won't be their next turn. But India's ours again. Oh, and we're going sub to sub. I don't know why I bothered with this. It's just a waste of time, but more naval combat that you guys can understand. It'll say surprise strike. It doesn't actually mean it is. And we hit their t sub. Now are they going to take me out too? No. That's it. We won. So sometimes there can be uh, mutual destruction where everything gets killed because the defender gets to roll and then just essentially nothing happened. Oh, I forgot I was doing this too. I did a lot of attacking in this turn. Holy crap. Two threes. 
There's one hit, like I say. So they get a shot and hit. So we lost a bomber. Do we go for it? Might as well. Boom! We lost it, though. So I think they're going to keep that, unfortunately. But we got rid of their battleship. So their transport, because there was nothing left to attack it, it still technically remains alive. And I think that's all I have to do. I'm going to move him up. Uh, and it's too late to move him. So I'm going to do everything up here. So again, Britain is worth, I think, oh, eight. There you go. You got it. I should have put that in with my tank or my sub, but oh well, I don't care. I've shown you everything I want to show you. And as I've said, so I'm skipping some of the stuff they're doing. It doesn't really matter. You've seen it before. The only thing I want to say is like America has now landed their plane in my country. I couldn't use that, but it would have counted if Germany had tried to invade. So that's helpful. But yeah, you've pretty much seen the whole thing. There's not much left to show you, as far as I'm aware. There was something I said. Oh, yeah, Russia. I'm going to show you that Russia doesn't get a turn. It will still choose to select me. It'll tell me that I can go. But I won't actually be able to build anything. I have no troops left anyway. I was going to show you, like, oh, I can move my five troops up here, but I lost them. So America's done. Russia would then usually get a turn. It very clearly says capital or cannot purchase units because player does not own capital. So that's the end of that turn. If I had units remaining, I could still do a combat move, but I don't. So that's done. I don't have a non-combat move because there's nothing to move. And I can't mobilize anything because I don't have a country to put it out in. So I will leave it there. As you can see... This isn't looking good for me, but like I say, I haven't really been playing strategy to win. I've just kind of been taking pot shots to try to show you all the different um, types of warfare that can go on. It is a long game. It is overwhelming, but don't let that panic you. If you want to run through it before you buy it, it does cost a little bit of money. So I think I got it on sale for 12 bucks through Steam. I highly recommend buying this version first. Because it kind of gives you a breakdown and gives you a bit of an idea before you sit down for five hours with friends on the tabletop. Because you want to know what you're doing. You don't want to be looking at the rules every couple of minutes. Because that really slows down the game. So, not that I'm trying to make a sale. I have nothing to do with any of this game. I just happen to really enjoy it. So, yeah. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I know I didn't cover absolutely everything. I tried to do the best I could. I had a little bit of an idea written down here for what to do. Um, but I do get a little sidetracked and excited and, and lost. So if there's anything I missed or anything you feel like you didn't understand or need, ask me. I will reply to comments usually within a couple of days. I'll try to get some stuff to help you. But again, my name is Rugby Packs. This is the first version uh, or this is the first video of a how-to that I'm going to do. I'm hoping to do more of these for other board games or other any other game. If you want, let me know what games you want me to, to purchase and show you how to play. There's a lot of games out there that are confusing, that are scary to look at, like Ticket to Ride, like uh, Settlers of Catan. These are all games that I love to play. They're big, they're complicated. People tend to shy away from them because it's like, oh, I don't know how to play that. Like, it takes hours, doesn't it? It's so much. You got to learn so much. Yes, but no. I think if you just actually took the few minutes to sit down and look at it, you'd be fine. But anyway, my name is Rugby Pax. If you've watched this whole video through, could you please just take the extra two seconds to like this video so that I know that people actually like this type of video? Um, if you want to consider subscribing, I do other retro gaming. I do Phasmophobia. I do other games sometimes. I haven't published in a while because I'm having trouble with my converter doesn't matter not your problem but i'm having trouble getting videos at the moment but i will hopefully be back to normal soon anyway let me know if you liked what you saw uh i hope to hear from you again in the next video and uh, i will see you then take care